guys what is going on welcome back to another esl podcast baby i've had too much coffee and i'm on a roll what is going on so all my wonderful homo sapiens out there in the world who are listening to this that's right we're getting back into TOEFL itp grammar that's right written expression but today we have an exercise this is a little bit difficult be sure to tune into my Instagram for all the additional questions. I will be looking forward to all of your answers. We have 15 questions here. And what I want to do is, well, guess what? There are two words. You will have to choose between the two. Now, remember, in the last or the previous podcast, I've gone over the adjectives and adverbs. So the focus here is, of course, identifying the errors and recognizing the correct use of both. All right, so basically what you will do is underline or whatever it may be. If you're looking at this on the blog, if you're looking at it anywhere in the world, you're going to choose the correct alternative, uh, you know, select the correct alternative, whatever it may be. So I'll give you an example. Number one, in any animal community, comma, herbivores. Now, the choice here is great or greatly. We have an adjective and an adverb. Herbivores great or greatly outnumber carnivores. So again, after a noun, are you gonna put an adjective? Okay, outnumber, of course, that is, let's just say that's kind of like a determiner. And then carnivores, because it's showing the number of carnivores, okay? So are you gonna use an adjective or a noun? Are you modifying the noun carnivores? Or, or is the out number, is that considered a verb? Because if it is, then you use an adverb. And in this case, that is correct. So with saying that, number one, in any animal community, herbivores greatly outnumber carnivores. You, know, you need an adverb before the verb. All right, so let's go into the next one. Number two, floods cause billions of dollars worth of property damage annual or annually. Now, again, there could be a verb before the adverb or it could be after. It all depends. But if we're talking about something that is, this is, you know what's really interesting about this annual, again, it being A-L, so that's technically an adjective, annually acts as an adverb of frequency, kind of like frequently, suddenly, usually, always, and acts as that in this sentence. So property damage annually. If we look at number three, regular or regularly, air mail service in the United States began in 1918. So are you going to use an adverb of frequency based on what is being said in the sentence about airmail service beginning in 1918? Or is this just an everyday common present simple sentence? If you could make, up, make your mind up, you know, which one it is, and I'll, let, I'll give you two seconds. And the answer is, of course, regular. Why? This is a routine. Well, not, not a routine, but this is a past event that has already happened. Okay. And of course, airmail service, that's a noun, a compound noun. So you're not going to use an adverb before that. But regular airmail air mail service in the United States began in 1918. I hope you guys are following me. I got two more for you. Number four, writer Ernest Hemingway was known for his simple language or simply language. Now, what's a language? Is that a noun? What do you put before a noun? You got your answer. And his lively dialogue. Now, I'm going to finish this bad boy off in a relatively very, very short podcast with number five. The tiny coral snake is mm, but deadly. Be very careful because the but deadly is the contrast. So what do we need is what? What do you normally put after the subject, the verb? Like, I am tired. What is tired? What is tired? It is, is it, is it an adjective? Because if that's the case, the tiny coral snake is beautiful but deadly, or the tiny coral snake is beautifully but deadly. Well, because we have the verb to be is, after that, we would need an adjective. F-U-L, beautiful, 
is the suffix of an adjective. So with that being said, people, we have a lot more. And guys, if you are interested in learning, of course, TOEFL ITP one-on-one -on -one or through Patreon, make sure, or with group, if you have a group, of course, make sure you reach out to me. We can get on a call, it's a call, a discovery call to figure out your needs and for me to meet those needs that you need. <laughs> I'm just too good. So with that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in to a relatively short, 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 short. Oh, ITP podcast. If you guys have any questions, you make sure you reach out to me. I'm still taking Q&As as always. I'm your host as always. <laughs> Over and out.